Noodles are a staple of the culinary world, and unfortunately, you have a million choices on which one to eat. And if you go to a restaurant, you might be paying $15 for a basic noodle dish. Even Panda Express is getting expensive these days. The point is, don't you feel like you should be able to enjoy this and stretch your dollar more? That's why today I'm gonna show you eight of the cheapest noodles you could possibly make at home easily to make the best bang for your buck. Starting with buttered noodles. I do need to note this though. Every single noodle dish in this video will be under $4 a serving. And five of them are under $2 per serving. We used items across Amazon, Walmart, and Target, among plenty of other other legit vendors to get the cheapest possible price per ingredient. Be aware, price changes will depend on where you live, but this is generally how things price out because we live in Texas. First up, butter noodles. This recipe makes four servings at 58 cents each. Full price breakdown after the recipe. First, you need a large pot of water. Heat it over high heat at a rolling boil. Since we're cooking pasta, salt your water generously, almost as salty as the ocean. To that, you're going to add half a pound or 225 grams of bucatini. Boil according to package directions or until cooked to al dente, which for these took about seven minutes. In a large sauce, pan or saucier if you have one. Add a quarter cup or 60 grams of unsalted butter and set over medium low heat. Once your butter is about halfway melted, cut off the heat and wait for your pasta to finish boiling. Once it's done, you're simply going to transfer your pasta from the boiling water directly to your melted butter pan. It's okay if the pasta water is getting in the pan. That's totally fine. It's actually a good thing. Begin constantly tossing your pasta, adding an additional quarter cup or 60 grams of cubed cold unsalted butter. Toss, 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 adding a tablespoon of pasta water at a time until you end up with a beautiful, luxurious, emulsified sauce coating the noodles. Season to taste with salt, toss together once more and serve on a plate or bowl as is. Optionally, if you want to get fancy, you can add a little bit of flaky salt and fresh cracked black pepper, but that's not mandatory whatsoever. On to our first cost breakdown. Here's how this works. Every single cost breakdown in this video will be in three different numbers. The first one, the total cost of all ingredients in bulk, assuming you have to buy absolutely everything. The next number is the cost of only the ingredients you actually used. And then finally, price per serving, which is based off the last number. So for this dish, total cost should you have to buy everything is $4.40. Now for the ingredients used in this recipe, the total comes up to only $2.32, which totals your cost for four large side dish servings of 58 cents a serving. And now let's taste. This is like the childhood memory that we all have. It's a school day, you just got back, you just want a little snack, and maybe someone just whips you up a little pasta with butter and salt? Holy sh**. I made this a little more adult. You know, we use bucatini. You could use regular pasta, and I made sure to emulsify with the pasta water. You can obviously skip that, but if you don't, you don't get good coating. Remember that. That's great. It's butter. It's noodles. There's no false expectations of what this is. It's exactly how you think it is going to taste. It tastes like that. It's a staple, and it's so worth the price. It's a classic. I will never not love it. I don't think there's anything that gives you bang for your buck and time and effort more than this. Period. End of story. It's literally three ingredients, if you don't include pepper, obviously. Not only is it something that we all probably already have, it's ingredients that are already relatively inexpensive. Butter can be on the pricey side sometimes, and the reward is significantly beyond everything you you put into this from money to time. This is a perfect dish. Moving on. Moving on to drunken noodles. This recipe makes four servings at $2.24 each. Full price breakdowns after the recipe. First, we're gonna make the sauce. Into a ramekin, add one tablespoon or 15 grams of dark soy sauce, one tablespoon or 15 grams of fish sauce, one tablespoon or 15 grams of light soy sauce, two tablespoons or 30 grams of hoisin sauce, and mix together until combined. But listen, if you wanna save even more money, you don't have to buy the light and the dark soy sauce. You can just combine the two and use one singular soy sauce to save even more money. It won't hurt the final dish. Heat a walk over medium high heat, add two tablespoons or 30 grams of vegetable oil, swirl to coat the wok, add half a pound or 225 grams of boneless, skinless chicken thighs cut into half inch cubes, season to taste with salt, and sear for one to two minutes, then begin stir frying just until the chicken's cooked through, another two to four minutes. Now from there, you're gonna add one thinly sliced shallot, eight cloves of garlic finely chopped, two Thai chilies thinly sliced, and one red fresno chili or jalapeno finely chopped. Season to taste with salt, stir fry for about 30 seconds or just until fragrant and lightly softened, then add eight ounces or 225 grams of broad dried rice noodles that have been prepared according to package directions. Some will require rehydration and some will require cooking. Point is, they need to be flaccid. Toss to combine, add your sauce, and toss once more just to coat. Now, right at the very end, I want you to cut off the heat and add half an ounce or 14 grams of holy basil or Thai basil leaves. They can be torn, finely chopped, left whole. It's totally up to you. Now fold that together, transfer to a bowl, and that is your drunken noodle. Your total ingredient cost should you have to buy absolutely everything is $23.85. Now the total recipe cost of the ingredients that you actually used is $8.95, which totals your cost per serving for four at $2.24 a serving. And now let's taste. I mean, they're drunken noodles, so if you have maybe a long night, if you know what I mean, doing things that aren't good for your body, put this in your body. It will make you feel worse, but it will taste good. Bad for the body, good for the mind. 
spicy, salty, umami, a little sweet, chewy rice noodles, chicken, meaty. I love the flavor profile. I don't know what's coming through the most. Maybe it's the basil. That flavor is just so good mixed with the chili. I'd love to see this with like chow mein noodles. I feel like that'd be really good. I love the flavors of this. Drunken noodles, an incredible dish, but probably not my favorite. I think we have better ones coming. Moving on. Moving on to pastina. This is essentially the dish that the nonna would serve you if you weren't feeling so good. Also, how was that Italian accent? That was pretty good. Come on. This recipe is $1.55 a serving for four servings. Full price breakdown after the recipe. In a two quart saucepan or slightly larger, that's fine. You're gonna add one quart or 950 milliliters of chicken stock, set that over medium high and bring that to a boil. Once it's boiling, add one cup or 120 grams of pastina to the pot. That's tiny little baby pastas. Look how cute they are. Let that cook for eight to 10 minutes or until al dente. And at this point, pretty much all of the liquid should have either evaporated or been absorbed by the pasta. So it's quite thick already. It's kind of like a risotto. You're gonna cut off the heat and add a quarter cup or 60 grams of unsalted butter. Constantly stir that together until it's melted and emulsified. And then finally, add three quarters of a cup or 60 grams of grated pecorino or Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Hell, maybe even a mix of both. It really depends on your taste. I should also add, if you wanna add a cheaper cheese, you can totally do that. The whole point of this is you only need a small amount of a really nice quality cheese. Now, vigorously stir that to emulsify. You're gonna spoon that onto a plate as much as you like. I flattened it out. This is really meant to just be served as is. That said, if you decide to add anything on top of this, such as more cheese and potentially black pepper, that is not covered in the cost, but it honestly would only add a marginal addition, maybe a, a buck or two. So here's our cost breakdown. If you have to buy absolutely everything, it's $16.26. And just for the ingredients that you used for the recipe, you're spending $6.19, which totals your cost per serving to be $1.55 for four servings. Not bad considering how luxurious it tastes. It was hard to determine if this was a noodle dish or not. I know what we're thinking, pasta isn't noodles, it's pasta. Look, it's close enough. It's a very savory dish. There's a lot of good flavors coming from that chicken stock. I mean, it's not risotto, but for the time you put in and the cost, you get something very similar. I also was pretty surprised by this. It's super rich and there's a surprising depth of flavor for this being what, like four things? It's another example of like really basic and relatively cheap ingredients. The cheese is on the expensive side, I will say that. And honestly, that's where the majority of the price comes from. But if you're making your own chicken stock, you're not even buying it, which by the way, buying it these days, I feel like is pretty cheap anyways. But whatever stock you use is going to create the basis of this flavor. So the better the stock, the better the pastina, and it doesn't require a lot of money to make great stock. So that said, the amount of flavor you get out, you're really wringing out every last dollar of flavor. This is by far the most deep flavor, the most unctuous, hearty dish we've had today. I'm surprised. This is actually like my second or third time, I think, ever making pastina. And I think this might be the best iteration despite how simple it is. Moving on. Now we have chow mein. This recipe is a little more towards the Chinese American style. It makes six servings at $1.31 each. Full price breakdown after the recipe. So first in a small bowl, we're gonna make a little bit of a chow mein sauce. So to that bowl, you're gonna add two teaspoons or eight grams of cornstarch, one teaspoon or four grams of toasted sesame oil, one and a half tablespoons or 22 grams of rice wine vinegar, two and a half tablespoons or 40 grams of light soy sauce, two tablespoons or 30 grams of oyster sauce. Whisk that till combined, and now we cook. Now either in a large pan, a large wok, whatever you have in your house that is a large cooking surface. You're gonna heat that over medium high heat. Add two tablespoons or 30 grams of vegetable oil, swirl to coat, and once that's ripping hot, you're gonna add half a pound or 225 grams of boneless skinless chicken thighs cut into half inch cubes. Make sure that goes on into one layer, okay? I don't want your chicken boiling on top of each other and not getting that good color. We want the Maillard reaction. So while that's searing, season it lightly with salt, sear for about two minutes, stir fry, add a little bit extra salt to taste, then add a quarter head of Napa cabbage thinly sliced, one carrot julienne, two ribs of celery small diced, two green onions cut into one inch segments, season lightly with salt, stir fry for about two minutes or just until the veg is softened, then add 12 ounces or 340 grams of chow mein noodles. You're gonna add these according to package directions. The reason I say that is some chow mein noodles come fresh from the store that you have to parboil and some come parboiled. So it really depends on the brand and the store you buy them from. Just be aware of that. Now toss that to combine. And optionally, I do hate bean sprouts, but somehow I like them in chow mein. Do I have an explanation why? No, I do not. So add one cup or 85 grams of bean sprouts, followed by your sauce. Toss that over and over until completely incorporated with the sauce. Then cut off your heat, add seven cloves of garlic, finely chopped, yes, seven cloves. Stir that to combine, let it get nice and garlicky and fragrant. Divide among six side dish plates and garnish with thinly sliced green onion. Your total ingredient cost, should you have to buy absolutely everything, is $30.17. Now again, you're buying whole ingredients, you won't use the whole thing in this recipe. Things like soy sauce, oil, so on and so forth. For the ingredients that are actually used fully in this recipe, you're at $7.87, which totals your cost per serving for six side dish portions at $1.31 per serving. And now let's taste. Chow mein. 
Chinese. The quintessential Chinese takeout noodle. I love the simplicity of this dish. Let's eat it. The beauty of this dish is whatever vegetables you put in here become the dish. So as long as you keep it relatively simple, some sort of nice greens or a cabbage, or maybe a little bit of onion or shallot or whatever you got, it's gonna perfume this whole dish and you've got this nice vegetable dish, it's fresh. It still feels like a good part of the meal and the meal still feels light, but you can have the whole thing. But it also has unctuousness, it has richness, but not too much. I like this. Moving on. Next up, a dish not talked about enough, San Francisco style Vietnamese garlic noodles. I adapted this recipe from my homie Kenji Lopez Alt in his book, The Walk. I normally don't do that, but I loved his recipe because it was so cost efficient. Thank you, Kenji. Coming with six servings at $1.12 a serving. In a five quart saute pan, you're gonna add about two quarts roughly of water. You need this thing to be big. A pot would probably do even better, but surface area is helpful for the style of recipe. So add your two quarts of water and bring to a boil. Now separately, in a five quart saucepan over medium heat, add a quarter cup or 60 grams of unsalted butter. Once that's melted, you're gonna add 20 cloves of thinly sliced garlic. And you might be thinking, Josh, that's a lot. Oh yeah? You know what? F it. 25 cloves. That's what you get for complaining. And let that cook gently, stirring often, just until fragrant and the garlic becomes translucent. Then cut off the heat. Once your water in your other pan is boiling, add one pound or 450 grams of spaghetti and cook for about eight to 10 minutes or until al dente. Now, while that's cooking, to your butter garlic mixture, you're gonna add one tablespoon or 15 grams of fish sauce, one tablespoon or 15 grams of soy sauce, one tablespoon or 15 grams of oyster sauce. Mix together. Now add your garlicky butter sauce to your noodles and toss constantly to emulsify. Then add one ounce or 20 grams of Parmigiano Reggiano, toss constantly until beautifully emulsified and almost creamy like. And then toss in two green onions thinly sliced, mix to combine, transfer to your plates, and garnish with the remaining green onion. Now, your total cost, should you have to buy absolutely everything, is $25.71. But just for the ingredients that are used only in this recipe, you're at $6.71, which totals your cost per serving for six side dish portions at $1.12 a serving. And now let's taste. San Francisco style garlic noodles. Although there's an Italian ingredient and sort of an Italian process here. You'll also notice some Asian inspiration with soy sauce, fish sauce, garlic, two great regions coming together into one beautiful plate of food. There's something special about this. I feel like I could eat this whole plate. I don't think I could say that for every single thing on this list. It's umami, it's rich, it's salty. It's got some fattiness from the butter and the cheese, but there's not so much that it stops you from eating this. I think all the flavors in this are really delicate. Everything's hitting you in just the right way that you're like, this has a somewhat addictive quality to it. I was expecting a clash here. I thought the Italian noodles wouldn't fit with the Asian ingredients that we're putting in, but instead it's a really good harmony of flavor. I was very surprised by it. Moving on. Next up, yaki udon. This is sort of like an everything but the kitchen sink. You can kind of add whatever you want to yaki udon. My recipe is what I like to add. It's simple, but it's tasty and contains a lot of ingredients that you may actually have. This recipe makes four servings at $2.36 each. Full price breakdowns after the recipe. Starting with our yaki udon sauce. Into a bowl, add two tablespoons or 30 grams of dark soy sauce, one tablespoon or 15 grams of mirin, one tablespoon or 15 grams of rice wine vinegar, one teaspoon or four grams of granulated sugar, one tablespoon or 15 grams of light soy sauce, two tablespoons or 30 grams of oyster sauce. Whisk that together until thoroughly combined, and that is your yaki mami sauce. I don't know what I'm saying. The cooking process for this is probably the easiest out of all of them. Heat a wok over high heat. Add two tablespoons or 30 grams of vegetable oil. Swirl that to coat around that little wok. Add half a sweet onion, julienne, a quarter head of Napa cabbage, rough chopped, three green onions cut into one inch segments, and a quarter pound or 112 grams of button mushrooms. Give that a little toss to coat with the oil, season to taste with salt, and stir fry for three to four minutes or till soft and starting to pick up a little bit of color. Now pour that out of the wok. Add one tablespoon or 15 grams of vegetable oil. Let that get nice and hot. Crack two eggs in your wok. I'm going to season the taste with salt and scramble them as they cook. Add your vegetables back into the wok along with one pound or 450 grams of udon noodles, half a teaspoon or two grams of ground white pepper, half a teaspoon or two grams of MSG. Add your yaki udon sauce, toss to combine, and then once that's hot throughout and thoroughly coated in your sauce and MSG, completely cut off the heat, add three cloves of finely chopped garlic, and toss thoroughly. The whole goal of adding the raw garlic at the end is you're perfuming it with this fresh, spicy, pungent, garlicky flavor. It's a good thing. Now split that amongst four bowls or into one giant bowl, I'm not judging. Garnish with toasted sesame seeds, thinly sliced green onion, and totally optionally, bonito flakes. I will say, bonito flakes can get really, really expensive, so if this takes the price too high 
product for you or you can't find the cheap brand that we used, then you can totally eliminate it. I personally like it on there, but it doesn't break the recipe if you don't have it. Your total ingredient cost, should you have to buy absolutely everything, is $39.98. And just for the ingredients that are used in this specific recipe, you're at $9.43, which totals your cost per serving at $2.36 for four nicely sized servings. Time to taste. Yaki udon. Not loved on enough, not talked about enough. I would argue potentially one of the coolest and easiest to make put in what you got type noodle dishes. The bonito flakes are optional, but they shouldn't be because they are insane how good they are but even without the bonito flakes there's a very distinct taste and experience with this dish these are the thickest noodles in this video and honestly it gives it a lot more texture it's just a bigger bite it's a bigger experience but it's also easy to eat a lot of this like the vegetable flavor really comes through on this but it's not overpowering the whole dish you get that nice soy flavor that deep umami this is extremely savory it reminds me of a pad thai with how things are mixed together in this but it has a really good flavor to it and i love the the thickness of the noodles. I think it complements it really well. This is my favorite one of the day. I love the eggs. I love the mushrooms. Everything within it is combined really well. And if there's one I'm going to be making a lot of, it's this one. Many of long nights in Japan were finished with a bowl of yaki udon for me when I lived there. It's a classic that's slept on, and I hope you make this. Here's what I will say. Out of everything that we've eaten today, somehow this is both the most straightforward flavor, yet simultaneously one of the more luxurious tasting noodle dishes to me. And for not that much more money than any of the other noodle dishes. It's one of my favorites, but I don't know that it is my favorite, but hopefully we'll find that by moving on. Moving on to japchae, one of my favorite Korean noodle dishes. This recipe makes two generous servings at $3.13 per serving. First, we're going to make our egg garnish, also called jidan. Now you're going to need two egg yolks seasoned lightly with salt and mixed together. Heat a small nonstick pan over medium heat, spray with cooking oil, and add your egg yolks. Cook for 45 seconds to one minute, or just until about 75% of the way cooked through. Flip, cut the heat, let sit in the pan for another 30 seconds. Take it out of the pan, roll it up, and cut it into thin threads. Kind of a chiffonade, essentially. These are a little under a quarter inch thick. In a large pot filled with water, bring to a boil over medium high heat. Add six ounces or 170 grams of sweet potato noodles and cook that according to package directions. This is probably one of the more expensive noodles to buy, but they are worth it. Heat a wok over medium low heat. Add four ounces or 115 grams of baby spinach. Cook that down, stirring frequently until fully wilted about one to two minutes. Now look, typically you would see this spinach boiled in a traditional recipe instead of sauteed like this. Do either or I personally don't boil it because sometimes it saps the nutrients out of your food. And look, I'm trying to be a little healthier here. Season that spinach with one tablespoon or 15 grams of soy sauce and two teaspoons or eight grams of sesame oil. Remove the spinach from the wok and sift to the side. Now let's cook our alliums. Heat that same wok over medium high heat. Add one tablespoon or 15 grams of vegetable oil. Then add three green onions, cut it into two inch segments and half a sweet onion thinly sliced. Season to taste with salt. Stir fry for one to two minutes or until softened and beginning to develop color. Remove and set to the side. Turn the wok back to medium heat. Coat with the same amount of oil. Add five button mushrooms thinly sliced. Season to taste with salt and stir fry for two to three minutes or until cooked through and beginning to develop color. I know you're thinking, Josh, why don't you just cook all these together? Well, you could totally do that. And frankly, I probably would in most cases. But for the sake of old school traditionality, these things are meant to be cooked separately and then combined in the end. Once your mushrooms are cooked, set them to the side. Heat the wok again, the same amount of oil. Add one carrot, julienne, season to taste with salt. Stir fry one to two minutes till just soften. Set to the side. Again, heat the wok, oil, half a red bell pepper, julienne. Stir fry for one to two minutes. Set to the side and now we assemble. Assemble. Now, grab a large mixing bowl and add your cooked noodles, your mushrooms, your green onion and sweet onion, your carrot, your red bell pepper. Follow that with one clove of finely chopped garlic, one tablespoon or 15 grams of soy sauce, one tablespoon or 15 grams of sweet soy sauce, or just a pinch of sugar if you don't have that. Toss, 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 and then just season with additional soy sauce to taste if you desire. And optionally, you can also add some toasted sesame oil to taste if you wish. Transfer your noodles to a plate and garnish with cooked spinach, your jidan, which is the cooked egg yolk, sprinkle with toasted sesame seeds and thinly sliced green onion. That is your japchae. Now to our cost breakdown. Your total ingredient cost, should you buy everything, is $26.79. But just for the cost of the ingredients used only in the recipe, you're spending about $6.25, which totals your cost per serving to $3.13. Of course, you'll be left over with soy sauces, maybe even more noodles, vegetables, so on and so forth. Use those for another recipe, because guess what? The total amount that you spent, if you bought everything, isn't all used in the singular recipe. And now we taste. This is the more unique noodle that we have today, and probably one of the more expensive noodles. But does that mean that it's as good as the price might suggest? 
They're very chewy and it's surprisingly smooth in your mouth. This is the lightest bite we've had all day. If you like noodle dishes or really any food for that matter, to have lots and lots of flavor, but really sit on you light, this is kind of that dish. You can fit a ton of vegetables in it. The diversity of the texture in this somehow feels ultra unique because of the glass noodles. They're a little more chewy than you would typically expect, almost like a mochi-like chew. I like it, they're great. It's definitely light. It does feel more like a side than a main. I think it stands on its own really well. And I love all the different components of it. I think it comes together to make a really good bite. I like that it calls itself out as a side though. You don't need to change anything about it. That said, moving on. Moving on to what I'm calling the budget chili garlic noodle. What does that mean? Well, chili garlic noodles can sometimes get a little expensive with all the different spices that I like to put in mine. So how do we make that cheaper? This recipe makes two servings at $1.91 each. So in a two quart saucepan over medium high, heat a half cup or 120 milliliters of vegetable oil to 350 Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. I'm using this specific ramen brand, but you can use any ramen ramen brand you want. And you're gonna need a total of two of these bad boys. Now, first take out whatever is inside your ramen packet, whether it's dry ingredients or dry ingredients with wet ingredients. The point is, pour your spice packets, sauce packets, whatever you got into that bowl. And on top of that, you're gonna add one and a half tablespoons or 22 grams of gochugaru or any chili flake you want. Mix that together. Then you're gonna pour your hot oil, which again has been heated at 350 Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius, bing bong. Whisk it together till fully combined and you have your chili oil. Now, cook what remains in your ramen packages, which should be two noodle discs, noodle squares. They're different depending on the brand. Cook according to package directions in boiling water. Then strain and transfer your noodles into the chili oil. Toss to combine, transfer to a plate, and garnish with finely chopped green onion and finely chopped garlic. Now for the cost breakdown. Your total ingredient cost should you have to buy absolutely everything is $13.95. I should add, $7 of that total cost, by the way, is spent on a five pack of bulldog noodles, which is kind of the small size that we found. So if you were to buy, let's say, top ramen for a dollar each or $2 each, it would be significantly less because you wouldn't have to buy all five, blah, 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 blah. Now, just for the cost of the ingredients that we used in this recipe is $3.83, which puts your total cost per serving at $1.91 per serving for some luxurious, umami rich spicy noodles. And now let's taste. We have a spicy chili noodle. I feel like if I got this in front of me, I would not go, oh, this someone just like rehash an instant ramen pack and added oil to it. It makes me concerned that it's happened to me in the past. So I'll give it a little mix. Dig in, fellas. That's insane. That is dangerous. It's literally just one additional step, which is instead of putting everything into one pot, you just boil the ramen in that pot. And then the second step is pouring the hot oil with your mix-ins that you normally put in. That's it. Out of all the chili oil noodles that I've made, effort for those is three times as much. I might even say this is better than some of them. Like I would put this in my top five. The fact that this is just a packet of ramen plus oil and then optionally garlic and green onions, it's insane how much this is leveled up. This took Josh five minutes to make. It tastes like this is something he took all day. This is low cost and low effort. This video isn't even about being low effort, but it's funny how those go hand in hand. So what is the best cheap noodle dish out of all of these? If you're gonna make one, I was surprised to say it was the spicy chili oil noodles. A lot of the ramens these days have the flavors so dialed in. It's got MSG in it, packed full of flavor. It's minimal effort, but the best part about it is it's guaranteed to be good every single time you make it. So you're not gonna accidentally under season it, etc. So if you're gonna make one of these, make that, but also don't forget to subscribe. I love you so much. Goodbye.